What's up, guys? Welcome to Trend in Research. In this video, we're going to dive into the Nano GPT code base by the renowned AI researcher Andre Karpathy. We're going to walk through the key components and explain their roles in building a powerful yet simple version of GPT. So, let's get started and have some fun with this exploration. Here's a quick rundown of what we're going to cover today. We'll kick things off with an introduction to the video and a bit about Andre Karpathy. Then, we'll talk about what Nano GPT is and why it's so cool. After that, we'll dive into the code base and break down the important components like layer norm, causal self-attention, MLP, block, GPT config, and the main GPT class itself. We'll also go over some GPT basics, like how GPT training works and why Nano GPT is such a great learning tool. Finally, we'll wrap things up with some key takeaways and encourage you to dig deeper into the code. Sounds good? Let's go! So, the main goal of this video is to demystify the Nano GPT code base by Andre Karpathy. We know that diving into a new code base can be a bit daunting, but don't worry, we're here to make it as easy and fun as possible. We'll guide you through the code, explaining each component's role in creating this simplified, educational version of GPT. Trust me, by the end of this, you'll have a much better understanding of how it all works. Alright, let's talk about Andre Karpathy. This guy is a big deal in the AI world. He's a renowned researcher and educator, and he used to be the director of AI at Tesla. He's made significant contributions to deep learning and computer vision, and he's known for making complex topics accessible to everyone. If you're into AI, he's definitely someone you want to follow. So, what exactly is Nano GPT? Well, it's a smaller, educational version of GPT, which stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. The idea behind Nano GPT is to keep all the core functionalities of GPT but make it simpler and more accessible for learning. It's perfect for those of you who are new to AI and want to understand how GPT models work without getting overwhelmed by complexity. Think of it as a stepping stone to mastering larger models. Alright, let's start with the Layer Norm class. This class is a custom implementation of layer normalization, which includes an optional bias parameter. You see, PyTorch's default layer normalization doesn't support this bias option, so this custom implementation is quite handy. When we initialize the layer norm instance, we specify the number of dimensions, NDIM, and whether we want to include a bias. The weight parameter is initialized to ones, which scales the normalized input, while the bias, if provided, is set to zeros. In the forward method, we take the input tensor and apply layer normalization using PyTorch's functional layer underscore norm, scaling the input by the weight and optionally shifting it by the bias. Next, let's dive into the causal self-attention class. This class implements self-attention with a causal mask, meaning each position can only attend to previous positions. When initializing this class with a given configuration, we first ensure the embedding dimension, n underscore embd, is divisible by the number of attention heads, n underscore head. The c underscore attn layer projects the input into query, key, and value vectors, each of size n underscore embd, and can include a bias if needed. The c underscore project layer then projects the attention output back to the original embedding dimension. We also have dropout layers for regularization to prevent overfitting. The number of attention heads and the embedding dimension are stored as instance variables. A flash variable checks if PyTorch's scaled underscore dot underscore product underscore attention function is available, enabling efficient attention computation. If not, we register a causal mask, bias, to ensure attention is only applied to previous positions. Moving on to the forward pass of the causal self-attention class, we start by processing the input tensor X. We unpack the input tensor size into batch size, B, sequence length, T, and embedding dimensionality, C. The C underscore ATTN layer projects the input into query, key, and value vectors, each split into N underscore EMBD dimensions. These vectors are reshaped and transposed to separate the attention heads. If flash attention is available, it applies scaled dot product attention to these vectors efficiently. Otherwise, we compute the attention scores manually by performing matrix multiplication between query and key vectors, 
scaling by the square root of the key dimension size. A causal mask ensures attention is only applied to previous positions. The attention scores are then normalized using the softmax function, and dropout is applied for regularization. The attention output is obtained by multiplying the attention scores with the value vectors, reshaped, and concatenated back to the original embedding dimension. Finally, we get the output by applying the C underscore project layer and residual dropout. Now, let's talk about the MLP class. This multi-layer perceptron is used in each transformer block. During initialization, we set up the C underscore FC layer to project the input to four times the embedding dimension, four asterisk N underscore EMBD, optionally including a bias. The JELU activation function then applies the Gaussian error linear unit nonlinearity to the output of C underscore FC. Next, the C underscore project layer projects the JELU output back to the original embedding dimension, and dropout is applied for regularization. The forward method processes the input tensor by sequentially applying C underscore FC, JLU, C underscore project, and dropout, returning the final output. The block class defines the basic building block of the GPT model. During initialization, we set up the lane underscore one layer for layer normalization on the input, followed by the ATTN layer which implements causal self-attention. The lane underscore two layer then normalizes the output of the attention layer, and the MLP layer applies the multi-layer perceptron to this normalized output. In the forward method, we process the input tensor by sequentially applying lane underscore one, ATTN, lane underscore two, and MLP, adding the output of each layer to the input tensor through residual connections, and finally return the output. Next, we have the GPT config class. This is essentially a configuration class for defining the architecture and hyperparameters of the GPT model. Here, block underscore size specifies the maximum sequence length, while vocab underscore size defines the size of the vocabulary. The n underscore layer parameter sets the number of transformer layers, and n underscore head defines the number of attention heads in each self-attention layer. The n underscore EMBD parameter determines the dimensionality of the embeddings. Additionally, the dropout parameter sets the dropout rate for regularization, and the bias parameter specifies whether to include bias terms in linear and layer normalization layers. The GPT class is where we define the main GPT model, combining embedding layers, transformer blocks, and the output layer. During initialization, we make sure vocab underscore size and block underscore size are provided in the configuration. The embedding layers, WTE for token embeddings and WPE for position embeddings, are initialized with the specified vocab underscore size and block underscore size. We then apply dropout to the input embeddings for regularization. The transformer blocks, represented by the H module list, are initialized with instances of the block class. The lane underscore F layer applies final layer normalization and the LM underscore head layer projects the final layer normalization output to the vocabulary size. Weight tying is used to share weights between the token embeddings and the output projection layer. We initialize all model weights using the underscore init underscore weights method and apply special scaled initialization to the residual projections as described in the GPT-2 paper. The number of parameters in the model is printed for reference. In the GPT class, the get underscore num underscore params method calculates the number of parameters in the model. It takes an optional non underscore embedding parameter, which defaults to true. We start by computing the total number of parameters in the model by summing the number of elements in each parameter tensor. If non underscore embedding is true, we subtract the number of parameters in the position embeddings, WPE, from the total. Finally, we return the total count of parameters. The underscore init underscore weights method is used to initialize the model's weights. For NN, linear modules, the weights are initialized using a normal distribution with a mean of 0 and standard deviation of 0.02, and biases are set to zeros if present. For NN, embedding modules, weights are initialized similarly using a normal distribution. The forward method of the GPT class defines how the model processes input tensors IDX, indices, and optionally targets. 
we begin by getting the device of the input tensors and unpacking the batch size, B, and sequence length, T, from the input tensor's size. An assertion ensures that the sequence length doesn't exceed the block size specified in the configuration. Position indices are generated for the sequence length, and the input indices are converted to token embeddings using the WTE layer. Position embeddings are obtained using the WPE layer, and dropout is applied to the sum of token and position embeddings. The input is then processed sequentially through each transformer block in the H module list. Final layer normalization is applied to the output of the last transformer block. If targets are provided, the LM underscore head layer projects the output to the vocabulary size, and cross entropy loss is computed between the logits and targets. If targets aren't provided, only the logits for the last position in the sequence are computed. The method returns the logits and the optional loss. The crop underscore block underscore size method in the GPT class allows us to adjust the block size of the model. This method takes the new block underscore size as an argument and ensures that it doesn't exceed the original block size specified in the configuration. The block underscore size in the configuration is updated to the new block underscore size, and the position embeddings, WPE, are cropped accordingly. For each transformer block in the H module list, the causal mask, ATTN, bias, is also cropped to the new block underscore size. The from underscore pre-trained class method is designed to load a pre-trained GPT model. We pass the model underscore type and optional override underscore args as arguments. An assertion ensures the model underscore type is supported. The override underscore args dictionary is initialized to an empty dictionary if not provided, and we assert that only the dropout rate can be overridden. We then import the GPT-2LM head model class from the transformers library. A message is printed to indicate the loading of the pre-trained model. The configuration arguments for the specified model underscore type are defined, forcing specific values for vocab underscore size, block underscore size, and bias. If a dropout rate is provided in override underscore args, it is applied to the configuration. We create a new GPT config instance with these configuration arguments and initialize a new GPT model with the configuration. The state dictionary of the new model is obtained, and the keys are filtered to exclude the attention bias. We load the pre-trained model using the GPT2LM head model class and obtain its state dictionary. Keys are filtered to exclude the masked bias and attention bias, and transposed weights are identified for special handling. An assertion ensures the number of keys in both state dictionaries match. For each key in the pre-trained state dictionary, the weights are copied to the new model. If the key corresponds to transposed weights, they are transposed before copying. The method returns the new GPT model initialized with the pre-trained weights. In the GPT class, the configure underscore optimizers method sets up the optimizer for training. We pass weight underscore decay, learning underscore rate, betas, and device underscore type as arguments. A dictionary of parameters requiring gradients is created, dividing them into decay and no decay groups based on their dimensionality. The decay parameters include all weight tensors in matmuls and embeddings, while the no decay parameters include biases and layer norms. Two optimization groups are created, one for decay parameters with weight decay and one for no decay parameters without weight decay. The number of decayed and non-decayed parameter tensors is printed. The Atom W optimizer is created with the optimization groups, learning rate, and betas. If available and the device is CUDA, the fused version of Atom W is used. A message is printed indicating whether the fused Atom W is used. The method returns the configured optimizer. The estimate underscore MFU method in the GPT class estimates the model flops utilization, MFU, in units of A100B float 16 peak flops. We pass FWDBWD underscore per underscore iter and DT as arguments. The number of flops per iteration is estimated based on the model configuration. We obtain the number of parameters in the model using get underscore num underscore params and unpack the configuration parameters for easier reference. The flops per token are calculated based on the model parameters. The flops per forward backward pass are calculated by multiplying the flops per token by the sequence length. 
The flops per iteration are calculated by multiplying the flops per forward-backward pass by the number of forward-backward passes per iteration. The achieved flops throughput is calculated as the ratio of flops per iteration to the time per iteration, dt. The peak flops of an A100 GPU in B float 16 precision is defined as 312 teraflops. The MFU is calculated as the ratio of achieved flops throughput to the peak flops. The method returns the estimated MFU. Lastly, the generate method generates a sequence of tokens based on a conditioning sequence of indices. This method is decorated with torch.no underscore grad to disable gradient computation. We pass IDX, input indices, max underscore new underscore tokens, temperature, and top underscore K as arguments. If the sequence context grows too long, it's cropped at block underscore size. The model is forwarded to obtain logits for the current position, and the logits for the final step are scaled by the temperature. If top underscore K is provided, the logits are cropped to include only the top K options. The logits are converted to probabilities using the softmax function, and a token is sampled from the probability distribution. This sampled token is appended to the running sequence, and the process repeats for the specified number of new tokens. The method returns the generated sequence of tokens. All right, let's dive into how GPT training actually works. GPT, or Generative Pre-trained Transformer, is trained using unsupervised learning on a massive corpus of text. This means that the model reads through tons of text data and learns to predict the next word in a sentence. It's kind of like teaching a child to read by giving them lots of books and asking them to guess the next word as they go along. Training involves optimizing the model's parameters to minimize the prediction error. Essentially, the model makes a guess, and if it's wrong, it adjusts its internal settings to do better next time. This process is repeated millions of times until the model becomes really good at making predictions. One of the key features of GPT is its use of the transformer architecture, which includes attention mechanisms. These attention mechanisms allow the model to handle long-range dependencies in text, meaning it can understand context that spans across long sentences or even paragraphs. This is crucial for generating coherent and contextually relevant text. So, why is Nano GPT such a big deal? Well, Nano GPT provides a smaller, more accessible version of GPT specifically for educational purposes. It retains all the core functionalities of GPT, but it's designed to be easier to understand and work with. This makes Nano GPT ideal for those who are new to AI and want to get their feet wet without diving into the deep end right away. It's like learning to drive in a smaller, simpler car before moving on to a high-performance sports car. Nano GPT allows you to grasp the fundamental concepts and mechanics of GPT models, providing a solid foundation that you can build on as you progress to more complex models. It's a fantastic learning tool that makes advanced AI concepts more approachable and less intimidating. In conclusion, we've covered a lot of ground today. We've walked through the key components of the Nano GPT model and explained their roles in building a simplified yet powerful version of GPT. We started with an introduction to Andre Karpathy and what Nano GPT is all about. Then, we dove into the code base, breaking down important components like layer norm, causal self-attention, MLP, block, GPT config, and the main GPT class. We also discussed GPT basics, including how GPT training works and why Nano GPT is such a valuable educational tool. Now, I encourage you to explore the code base further on your own. Play around with it, tweak the parameters, and see what happens. There's no better way to learn than by getting your hands dirty. And if you have any questions or need additional resources, feel free to reach out. Thanks for watching, and happy coding!